Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Advantage One today on a beautiful sunny day and we have an equally beautiful 32R LDS J Flight loaded with pretty much all the trimmings that were possibly available on one of these back when it was first built. It's 50 amp, it's second air ready, it's got the fiberglass skin upgrade and buddy it looks good. It, it looks like somebody stored it in a time capsule. What I love about this model, they, they nailed this one really well because they built it not so much worrying about like how compact and how small can we make it. It's big, it's open, it's spacious. It has a feeling in the living room that I truly feel rivals just about any fifth wheel I've been in lately. This is what I was talking about right here. This is like almost like it rolled off the production line and then somebody went through and detailed it. It is in that kind of condition. I say that with 100% conviction and no funny business. Uh, beautiful floor plan. So we've got a huge entertainment slide and then I'm sitting in a seating slide out over here, a big super slide over here. And it opens this thing up along with all those windows and just a, a well executed floor plan. It is big, it is open, it is airy, it is spacious. This is something, uh, I mean, this this is sharp. I really like this. Uh, I, I, I'm Sometimes I see a camper come in like this in the used market that's no longer built, and I go, why not? Like, is it me? This feels like this needs to find a place back in the new RV market here. Now, they didn't build it short. They didn't build it as light as possible. They stretched everything out. Like, you don't have to turn those chairs to close the slides. That's what most rear recliner, or in this case, rear rocking chairs, apologies, that's a swivel rocking chair. Most rear chair floor plans require you to have to wrestle those things before you close them. You really don't have to. You just want to strap them down so they don't go banging around. Now, whether you're at those chairs uh, or you're at the sofa, you always have easy viewing because one of the secret weapons on this one is the fact that that TV can pivot around to wherever you want. So if you even give it a little bit of a kick right there, and you sit at the sofa, easy viewing. Now, without touching that thing, I pivot over here to the uh, the rear chairs, easy viewing, you know? Not to mention the fact that when you're over here, you can sit here and have a conversation, or maybe somebody wants to lounge on the sofa. I like to do that, my wife likes to do that. One of us stretch out on the sofa, one of us grab a chair, we'll sit over here in the corner, watch Fringe or whatever we're up, uh, catching up on uh, at a given moment, finishing up season five of Fringe currently. Anybody else ever see that show? Don't spoil the ending for me, by the way. We're not done yet. Um, got the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down there. Bluetooth uh, DVD stereo. I mean, uh, a lot of the things that you expect and really a lot of things that are even still in modern J flights, they're all here uh, because this thing, that's the funny thing about J flight. They became more heavily equipped than almost anybody else in this class years ago, but they kind of got so far ahead of their time that they sort of had to put on the brakes. So this is very much in line from what you find in a lot of J flights today. Now, all the windows open for airflow, including those tall windows on either side of the rocking chairs there. All of the shades in this are those pleated pull down uh, kind of sunblocker shades. Every single one of them staying up. You can see, obviously you can see out the windows, uh, you know, normally. Um, I always like to try to demonstrate little details like that for you. If you appreciate the way that we do go through those details, do me a favor, if you haven't done so already, if you've been a regular viewer, but you haven't done it, go ahead and click that subscribe button and follow along here. Um, oh, that is a hide-a-bed sleeper sofa, by the way. It's a big trifold. So what's cool about that is it will open up and occupy a chunk of this floor space. But since this is a rear living room, everything that you need to do in the morning over here, like in the kitchen area, and that's another thing I like about this one, it's like two different worlds. We were just hanging out in the living room and suddenly now we're really in like the family kitchen space over here. Even though it is technically open air, there feels like a very clear definition of when I leave from, you know, here and go to there kind of thing, if that makes any sense. Maybe I'm just rambling. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's an eight cubic foot two-way gas electric fridge, by the way. That's pretty much the biggest that travel trailers had at the time this was made. If I open a couple things up, there is, uh, where do I want to start? Where, you know what? Let's catch pretty much all the storage here. Let's start with that little uh, cabinet right there above the sofa. Both of the dinette benches have storage. They just kind of, the doors flip open. There's a little mini pantry on the side of that refrigerator, but notice how the fridge is not gross and disgusting. Now, there's a dedicated pantry over here, 
but there's actually a corner pantry that we'll get to see in a little bit, kind of in that hallway. The microwave, the stove, the refrigerator, all those appliances, all looking absolutely fantastic. And the, uh, like, at, at first glance, you see almost, you're thinking, oh, really, just one drawer? And then you realize there's those two big, like, pots and pans drawers in there. But that's not all, because... The whole entertainment center and slide out get in on the action. Everything in this opens for storage over here. There's just, there's nothing gone to waste. You know what? I knew I would miss one thing. There's also a uh, flip up storage cabinetry above the rear chairs here. I want to make sure I don't, uh, like Steven Tyler, I don't want to miss a thing. But notice too, how there's struts on these doors so that you don't have to juggle them open with your head. It's, it's those little attention and touch details that go in here. Ceiling, by the way, is six foot nine. So if you're a little bit taller uh, individual like myself walking around in here, I'm six three ish, depending on what shoes I'm wearing on a given day and how much I'm slouching. It's uh, you know to give you a reference point here below the air conditioner. It's very comfortable to walk around in here. Now this skylight that's blinding you from the glare off my forehead right now that's now finally gone. Although you're probably blind and it's too late. Um, it's just another thing that opens everything up that makes everything look and feel so big and comfortable and open, you know? Um, the uh, corner cabinet I was telling you about, that's over here. This is just at a really funny angle for me to try to get still photos of, but I figure, you know, you're buying the whole trailer. You want to pretty much get to see the whole thing, right? Little touches too. The owners added only a couple small little things. For the most part, everything is still factory original. Like they added the little handle on the screen door there so that you didn't pull on this to close it which is a good way to rip that sucker off of there that's a wider 30 inch door that's not necessarily uncommon but at the time this was built it was very uncommon for a stick and tin type trailer and that's again what this kind of is uh at the time this was made the the next thing up in the eagle food chain was called or uh, the jaco food chain i'm sorry was called an eagle super light which really all it was was just a j flight like this with laminated sidewalls. It was really a J-Flight G3, whereas this was what was at, for a time called a J-Flight G2. The G2 name just kind of phased out a little bit though. Porcelain foot flush stool there, plenty of uh, leg room. Remember, taller ceiling means taller shower. And what they did here, I wanted to leave this up. This is a mirrored uh, vanity door. It's not cracked and broken. I'm not hiding anything. Probably because they took extra efforts like this. They actually put it uh, like the, the towel loop right here, the hand towel loop. They wrapped a towel around it and strapped it in transit. So it couldn't go anywhere. So it couldn't get banged around. Little, when you see things like that, like there's indicators that I look for. It's that kind of stuff that makes me think, okay, these were people who were really concerned about having a nice RV, keeping it in excellent shape, doing the things that they needed to do, even if it wasn't necessarily the most fun or convenient. It's pristine. We didn't clean it. We didn't detail it. They just dropped it off the truck and here it sits. It's also 50 amp service, by the way. So if you want to add a second air conditioner here, the bracing is all up in the ceiling. You would need to have a service center uh, cut the hole in and install the air for you. But all the stuff needed to do that, it's all right there. And if you are interested, you could put a TV on the wall over there, right below where those hookups are located. Now, one of the extra things I like to do for you whenever I have the chance is close up slides to show the RV in travel mode. And one of the cool things about this floor plan is that unlike most really big multi-slide travel trailers, it is uh, <laughs> it is extremely travel accessible, not just through the core critical kitchen type areas like the refrigerator and the sink, but frankly, uh, I think this one is totally turtle friendly. I don't think there's much of anything in this RV you can't get to or use when the slides are closed. Even, I don't know why you would need to at a travel stop, but if you really wanted to, you can even slide back here between the slides to get to even these upper storage cabinets or to make sure that the chairs are secure before you open the slides, which by the way, what we're looking at right now, this is how the folks actually brought it to us right here. Uh, after everything else you've seen is where I got it opened up. So they had the chairs down, everything strapped down. They did everything they were supposed to do to make sure stuff wasn't all banged up. Well, now that I've seen the chairs turned around like that, if that window shade was open, that'd be an awesome little lakefront viewer. Now, the first thing that really jumps out at you on this one is obviously that fiberglass skin. If you're familiar with the J-Flight series, you know that the vast majority of them have the uh, corrugated sidewalls. 
Now, uh, what it is, it's a fiberglass with like a, a double Luan backer on top of the traditional wood skeleton. So it doesn't change the construction of the RV. What it really does here is it adds a much easier to clean, arguably better looking skin on top of an already very good RV that uh, is also extremely hail repellent. So if you are uh, in hail country, this is something that uh, might not get totaled out because mother nature decides to drop it on you like it's hot. <laughs> Uh, this camp kitchen is great. You've got the uh, good storage out here, nice little prep space. There is a gas grill quick connect down here by the rear bumper. So if you're looking for some outdoor cooking, that's where you could do all that. Meanwhile, having a fridge, entertainment center, even microwave out here saves you a lot of trips in and out of the RV. Now what's nice is it's a door side slide, which traditionally might eat into the awning a little bit, but because it's not too giant of a slide, it's not too long, and this is long enough of an RV, you still have some really good uh, power running patio space right there. Up front, like almost every J flight, you've got a huge front storage compartment and it actually does go all the way under the uh, master bed. So if you lift the uh, bed up from the inside, you can get to it from indoors, outdoors, or you could partition it off, whatever kind of works for you. Now, I, I, I knew I would do this myself. I just got done talking about how uh, the fiberglass skin doesn't change the construction of the RV. That is generally true on five sides of the camper. But for whatever reason, when you get the fiberglass skin package on a J flight, the front flat wall that we're looking at here actually does become laminated. I have asked why do they do that? And the best answer I've ever received is, uh, I don't know, because we always have. Like, <laughs> nobody down at Jayco knows why they do it. They just know that they're doing it, it works, and they're not going to change things around. Looks like the previous owner swapped up to a power tongue jack here not all that long ago. Power tongue jacks were almost always uh, optional on travel trailers. One of the other things that you're looking at here, and this is made when you get the fiberglass skin on this generation of J-Flight, you also get those sleek frameless windows on the exterior uh, of the RV that tilt open for some rainy day airflow. But for our slide side like seating airflow, you still got a Max Breeze sliding panel right there. Nice little uh, protective details too, like the, the mud dauber screens there on the, uh, the water heater. Uh, we've got our black tank flush and outside shower here right above the sewer station. And this is made with the J-Flight thermal package. It is enclosed, it is heated, it is insulated. There's a radiant barrier through the slide floor. Uh, this is arguably on the par of a lot of fifth wheels even today. And again, where I really see this one shining is if you've got yourself some kind of lake site, uh, you, you got like a real scenic view. You can just park it in the uh, orientation that works for you and have all those windows facing where you want, including that giant rear window. And it's funny, you don't see rear windows quite that large most of the time anymore. And you go, why? Why wouldn't they do that? And I think the answer is because rear recliners have become less common and rear sofas have become more common. Well, the sofa back would block a chunk of that window so the rear wall windows in a lot of rear living RVs have actually gotten smaller the past couple years. Oh my gosh. I haven't been up here yet. This is the first I've stepped foot up here. This looks better than a lot of new RV roofs that I get onto that gets shipped straight from the factory down at Haylet RV. This looks tremendous. Uh, if I'm gonna be critical, the corners of this skylight are in need of a touch up bead. And that's the worst that I got. I, I can't. I cannot find faults on this RV anywhere. Ugh, geez, oh, Pete's. I mean, the membrane is so clean. It's been clean condition. It's very healthy. Maybe some touch-up beads, some non-sag sealant on that front corner right there, but you get the idea. Other than some very minimal, quick dab and go kind of stuff, there's nothing up here you gotta be concerned about. I also like the fact that um, you know, on, on days like today, maybe you don't want to scream the air conditioner the whole time you want to leave the windows and the vents open. Being able to have those vent covers there, helping keep the bugs out, or on a rainy day, you can keep the, uh, the, <clears throat> the rain out while still getting that air flowing through. They added those both above the bedroom and back here above the living room. What do you guys think? Am I crazy or is that something where you got like a lake site, you want to leave this thing parked? I mean, there's nothing that says you can't tow it, but it really feels like an RV that you're going to use almost like like a, a destination cottage. You're gonna show up, have a good time, maybe have a couple friends over, maybe pop out the hide bed and room for an air bed on the floor if need be. It's a couple's rig that has a lot of comfortable, relaxing space. But man, you could pack it up and party in it too. Whatever works for you, I suppose.
And what's great is I, I certainly don't see where you're inheriting someone else's problems. This is all right, right and tight. So give us a call. Need hitching, need financing, need parts. We'll take care of you. Short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.